Hello everyone, my name is Cherie Ledoux and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, New Tools in Vulcan 10. Your host today is Jesse Oldham. Jesse is a project leader for Vulcan Software. He works with the product management department to define development projects and ensure incorporation of client feedback into those projects. A few things before we get started. First, today's webinar will conclude with a question and answer session, so please feel free to write questions in the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Also, you will receive a link to a recording of this webinar by email, in case you'd like to see it again. It will also be available on the MapTech website at a later date. I'll now hand it over to Jesse. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending today's webinar. Today, we're going to talk about some of the new tools and features that are going to be available in the upcoming release of Vulkan version 10. And if we take a look at our agenda, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a number of things from all parts of the software, uh, from analysis and geostats to the open pit side of things, uh, also on the modeling uh, uh, and the geology realm. And then we're going to finish off with some tools that are available on the underground side of things. Uh, this isn't a, a comprehensive list of, some, of all of the features and tools that are going to be available in the upcoming release. Uh, just a few key ones that I wanted to talk about today. And of the ones that we will talk about, some of them will be a little bit more high level. We're not going to necessarily go into the software for all of these. Uh, the reason for that is in the coming weeks and months, we're going to have uh, some upcoming events that uh, will showcase these tools in more depth. So at the end of the presentation today, I'll have a slide uh, with a little bit more info on some of the webinars and videos that will be released that you can refer to in, uh, in the coming weeks and months. To start off, we'll talk about the new Vulkan Data Analyzer. And the Vulkan Data Analyzer is the new tool that we're introducing, uh, but what we're doing is we're enhancing some existing functionality that, that you uh, may be used to already in Vulkan, and that's uh, our variography tools. We have a robust set of tools for variography studies right now, but the uh, workflow that is required of those tools is a little bit iterative. You need to do some setup and run and then display, and any changes you want to do, you have to uh, once again run and display. One of the goals of the data analyzer was to make this workflow for you and your variography study much more streamlined. So here I'm able to pick a data source and then very quickly and easily change my properties and see those updates to the chart um, instantaneously. Uh, those properties could be the actual variogra variogram properties, such as your lag size or your search parameters, and that's going to update um, what you're seeing on the chart. You can also update the actual chart settings, you know, axes, colors, line style, point style, etc. The other thing with the data analyzer that you're, you're seeing in front of you is the improved interface uh, and the chart presentation. These charts are you know, ready to go into uh, a report and, and a much uh, needed improvement over the charts that are currently output. Additionally, with the Vulcan Data Analyzer, we're introducing uh, this new chart type for variography studies, and that's the fan variogram. This is going to allow you to look at a number of directions all at once. Um, here on the fan, you can then choose one or more directions to look at in more depth, uh, and it streamlines that whole process in that sense. Additionally, uh, in the Vulcan Data Analyzer, we're going to uh, include new statistics tools. Like I mentioned, this first pass is going to include the variography tools, um, but we're going to be adding additional statistics tools that will help you with just normal exploratory, exploratory data analysis. You know, histograms and box plots and scatter plots and all of those things will be implemented in here in this tool using this same interface and streamlined workflow. Kind of continuing on in the geostats realm of things, uh, there have been a number of enhancements to existing options as well as the development of some new tools. Uh, on the unfolding side of things, which has seen uh, a kind of surge of popularity in the last number of years, we've enhanced uh, both uh, the methods for creating, creating anisotropy models as well as projection models. So previously with anisotropy models, you needed to specify two surfaces and it would create the model off of that. Now you have the ability to specify multiple ellipsoids throughout uh, the block model area, and it will do an interpolation uh, between those ellipsoids. Alternatively, you can also specify design data, um, 
moments of inertia is also another method that's going to be available for those of you that are familiar with that. Um, and you can also just use one surface as opposed to using two. So a number of methods that you can uh, pick between depending on your needs and your deposit. For projection models, uh, instead of being constrained to just project against plan view, you can now uh, specify uh, your own plane and it will project against that plane. The definition of that plane is also interactive in Envisage. You're able to grab a control, move that around, and, and get the plane exactly where you want it. For uh, ellipsoid manipulation, you know, if you think back to um, any of the estimation and simulation tools, basically anywhere in Vulkan where you're specifying an ellipsoid, you're able to now do that interactively. So you're able to display the ellipsoid on the screen, which allows you to uh, see it in relation to your data and better visualize things. But then as uh, you're working with it, you're, you can interactively grab onto the handles and controls and manipulate the rotation or the uh, dimensions of the axes. In terms of new tools, uh, we're introducing uniform conditioning and principal component analysis. And as I mentioned, those are going to be covered more in depth in later webinars, um, so stay tuned for those. If we jump over to the open pit side of things, uh, I want to talk about a new tool that's being introduced called the Automated Pit Designer. And the Automated Pit Designer is uh, a, a new tool that's going to allow you to very easily and quickly create um, some initial design strings off of the raw data that comes out of a pit optimizer run, for example. This allows you to put some more realistic parameter, real world parameters um, to your data. Helps with some sensitivity analysis of that raw data so you can choose a number of different bench heights and quickly take a look at what that would look like in some rough design strings. And it's also good for a visualization tool. You can see, you know, looking at the image on the right is much cleaner and, and it paints a better picture of, of what we got out of Pit Optimizer than just doing a simple dump from the block model. Staying in the open pit side of things, um, we're going to talk about some enhancements that have been done to the open pit blocks option. And for this, I'm going to actually jump out of the presentation and uh, go into the software. So the current tool allows the user to start with a bench, whether that bench is uh, represented by a triangulation or a set of polygons, and cut that bench up into smaller blocks. And so this is typically used kind of a short to medium term planning tool. And uh, the enhancements that have been done to this tool really enhance in terms of um, the, the reporting of the blocks that you've generated, the ability to edit those blocks, uh, and then also some of the attributes um, that come along with those. So I'm kind of cramped here on the screen working with just one monitor, um, but you can see I've got my, uh, my panel up, my report window is also up, and the report window is kind of keeping a running tally of what's going on in terms of the tonnage and the grade, in this case gold and copper, uh, of the blocks that I've already created. This report window is synced up with the data, so as I click on a block, it's going to highlight the corresponding row in my report window. And alternatively, I can click on the report uh, row, and it's going to highlight the block. So as I create a new block, it's going to automatically add that block to the report window, giving me my numbers um, straight away. On the editing side of things, you've got a number of um, options available to you. These are familiar uh, of w the type of options you can use in Envisage, but they're tied into the, uh, the blocks option here. The neat thing about these uh, editing tools is they, are, they function in a pairwise manner. So if I want to move this point, it's going to move the affected blocks, both um, this block and the adjacent block, at the same time makes uh, adjusting and editing much easier for you. Same thing is true of uh, the replace string or delete blocks. It's doing that in a pairwise function. If I do a partition to split the block, now I can see I've got both blocks here. Okay. For the sake of space, I'm going to uh, just close the report window for now. The other thing I'll mention is some of the display attributes um, that are tied into the blocks here. I can specify line styles and hatching for the various blocks, um, colors to represent the periods, and this is all interactive. So as I change my period, I'm able to see what my current period is, my 
future periods and then my previous periods. I'm also able to jump from bench to bench and look above and below as I'd like to. Incorporated in the option is block model slicing. So I just hit B on my keyboard, the hotkey to slice on this bench uh, using the parameters that I've set up here. These are very familiar parameters for those of you working with block models and especially viewing the block models. And those same options are available. So I can turn on and off data tips. I can shrink the blocks. And this is all done uh, very dynamically. Lastly, just wanted to point out some of the attributes uh, that it writes back to the actual objects. This block, for example, it's writing back my period, my bench, tons, gold, and copper. And this makes it very easy to use these objects downstream in your planning and scheduling process. Uh, so I've actually done some runs of this um, where I've taken the, the blocks output from the tool using the attributes and then inputting it into our Vulkan Gantt scheduler to um, uh, start playing with the schedule and those attributes really streamline the whole process. So we'll jump back into the presentation here and switch gears uh, out of open pit back into the geology realm of things uh, looking at uh, our implicit modeling enhancements. Currently, Krieging is the estimation method that's used behind the scenes for uh, getting, our, getting our solids for an implicit modeling run. We've now introduced uh, RBF as an option for the users, uh, RBF radio basis function. So that's available um, if you're interested in, in uh, those two different methods. We've also implemented uncertainty, an uncertainty tool within our implicit modeling. Uh, so if I choose a domain, I can choose a number of optimistic and pessimistic scenarios, and it will vary things um, so I get a number of different um, possibilities. If I look at this slice through these solids, the pink slice is kind of my base case, and then I've got a number of optimistic scenarios and a number of pessimistic scenarios. And you'll notice all the scenarios converge on the intercept point because that's a known data point. We need to conform to that. But in between the drill holes, that's where I have the, that interpolation based on a pessimistic or optimistic scenario. Also, uh, we've introduced um, faulting, uh, the, the ability to incorporate faulting information into your implicit modeling run. So the image on the right shows a solid that was output just from the drill holes. There's no faulting information incorporated in there, and you can see what, what solid it, it uh, pops out for us. The image on the left, uh, I've incorporated faulting information. What this has done is it's treated each side of the fault as a separate domain for uh, estimation and search purposes. And then it's also, in this case, using the fault to cut against that yellow solid um, to break that as a hard boundary. Moving on to uh, the underground enhancements. Uh, we've got a number of enhancements uh, for our Vulcan Gantt scheduler. One of those being uh, the coloring of, of various entities. So here on, uh, on the screenshot here, we're coloring our Gantt bars by activity type. Helps me to better visualize my data as I'm working with this workbook. But also I can color the Envisage objects uh, based on a VGS attribute. So I can select that VGS attribute, um, a, a legend as, I, as I'd like to define it, and it will color those objects and really enhance the link between the, VG, the schedule itself and the objects that I'm viewing. There's also um, automatic filter creation. So if I want to create a set of filters as I'm working with my, my schedule, I can pick an attribute. It's going to read the possible values within that attribute and automatically create those filters for me. Kind of just a time saver as I'm, as I'm working with those filters. Scripting has also been added for those of you that are interested in customizing your workflow through the use of scripts. Also, we have uh, percent complete. Now um, you're able to input that information into your schedule, and it will reflect that in the schedule accordingly. The grid functionality, uh, as you're working um, in the VGS pan, um, window, has been enhanced so you can uh, freeze columns and do bulk updates of fields, etc. And lastly, you can export to XML um, if you'd like to view the schedule in an external viewer, for example. Lastly, we'll take a look at Level Designer. And the Level Designer tool is a relatively new tool that's been introduced uh, in Vulkan. This uh, was introduced in Vulkan version 9.1. And the first uh, version of this tool only supported transverse stoping arrangements. What we're uh, doing in uh, the introduction of this 
second version of the tool is uh, the ability to do uh, longitudinal stoping arrangements. So here on the screen I've got a number of stopes and uh, a number of access points. So you can see we're going to attack this um, quite differently than we could have with the previous iteration of the tool. We're going to use the longitudinal mode as I have specified here. Um, no other special parameters in here. You'll notice that some of the parameters are grayed out if they're only applicable to transverse, for example. Uh, but as I hit preview design, it's going to quickly uh, lay out some development strings to those stopes. You see it's following um, each one of the stopes as it transitions from stope to stope. A few other things I'll point out with the enhancements that have been done to Level Designer. For the transverse cases, you're now able to put in a little bit more detail uh, for your designs. You can extend crosscuts beyond the end of the stope which is where it stops by default. Uh, you can extend the level beyond the cross cuts. And then additionally, you can apply a primitive at the time of creation. And this, this helps for visualization, uh, but it also is very handy if you are applying templated attributes during the creation of the design strings. Um, if you are cre if you're calculating tonnage and grade, for example, and using a specific primitive profile, you no longer have to explicitly type that um, into the equation. What you can do is you can use the primitive that's being applied at the time of creation, and it's going to use that shape. This makes the equations a little bit easier um, to manage, but also helps as I'm trying different scenarios, doing different primitives or sizes. I don't have to constantly change my equations. I just change the primitive that I'm applying here. So let's jump back into the presentation and uh, kind of do a little look at some of the upcoming events. As I mentioned, uh, especially for some of those things we looked at on just a high level, there's more information to come. Uh, more information is going to be available both in webinars and videos. So in May, there's going to be a webinar for some of our unfolding tools that we touched on briefly. In June, you can look forward to a webinar on automated pit designer. And then in July, geostats and variography, and that includes the, the upgrades um, available in Vulkan Data Analyzer. And then we have a number of videos, um, the Open Pit Blocks Enhancement, Vulkan Gantt Scheduler, and geostats tools. So keep an eye out for, for those announcements, and, and on the website, those are going to be available, because uh, there's a lot of tools and functionality to look forward to uh, in, in the version. With that, I'll uh, turn it back to Sharif if there's any questions. Great. Thank you, Jesse. As I mentioned before, please write any questions that you may have in the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. So the first question I have here, Jesse, is when will version 10 be released? Uh, so right now we're kind of going through some of the final stages uh, of testing and whatnot, uh, and the release should be available soon thereafter. So look forward to communications on that, uh, but it should be um, shortly after we finish those activities. Excellent, thank you. Um, another question I have here is, will the data analyzer be included with the Geostats module, or will it cost extra? Um, that's another thing that's being reviewed right now. Um, so as we get closer to release, that uh, information will be made available. Okay, great. It looks like those are all the questions I have right now. Um, it could be that people are still typing those in. So if we did not get to your question today, we will get back to you after the webinar. And um, we'd like to thank you for joining us. If you have additional questions later on, just post those in the users area on our website. If you're not a MapTech client and don't have access to the users area, simply email solutions at maptech.com and we'll ensure your questions are answered. On behalf of the entire MapTech team, we'd like to thank you for attending today.